Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. If you're new to the channel, um, here I talk about vermicomposting and my indoor worm farms. And I show you the different kinds of bins that I have and different kind of worms. Today we're going to look in on my 55 gallon bin that we affectionately call blue. And basically today uh, you may see that this is very much, if you're not new here, you'll see that this is very piled up over here and that is because I actually have given Blue a new job. So what we're going to see is how Blue is managing his new job of being the area where I dump all my other harvests and dry out based on you know the amount of surface area he has to help us. So all of this did not start out in Blue, this started out in the DIY and also Red Wigglers etc. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a rough harvest of this with my large sifter just to get the big chunks out so that it can uh, dry into good casting because as you can see there's a lot of big chunks here. So that's what I'm going to do first. So I have my big one half inch screen here and I'm just going to pull out the really big pieces here and put them in a bucket. All the rest of this is actually going to stay in blue until it gets to a nice dry consistency. So I'm not really rescuing this from anything, or I'm not going to use these castings for anything. They're just going to go back in, minus all the big huge tr chunks and everything. So that, I think when we decided that the uh, worms that I was using to grow up bigger, weren't getting bigger. We also took some out of that system and put it in blue. And then when we harvested the other bins, we also have been dumping the castings um, on blue. So I'm just kind of doing a real quick once through here to try and get rid of the big chunks. Um, if you are new to worm farming, things with big chunks don't tend to uh, dry out very well. And so you kind of end up with a situation where you have these big, huge, I don't know, if they're food or if they're castings, or but they don't dry very well. So I'm trying to get those out of the system so that I can get these castings on their way. So blue here is done by the wedge method. So aside from this new task that he's been given to um, dry out the castings from other bins, aside from that, the wedge system is basically you put, you start at one end over here. I'll put a diagram up for you. You start at one end with your, your food and your bedding. And as the worms go through it, it kind of compresses and gets eaten up. Then, the next time you come in, you move over a little bit and you put more food and bedding. And over time, it continues to compress and it continues to become more finished. And as time goes by, then you keep moving this way and the worms will move this way with the food. Of course, I've kind of screwed that up with giving Blue this new task of having to dry out other bins castings because that does make an influx of worms that were not originally here. So this portion of blue is all castings that are pretty much finished, at least in my book. And this other end is where I feed and put new, uh, new bedding. So I'm just going to kind of mound this up a little bit higher over here to make kind of a better distinction between the two areas until I can get this harvested, um, get this new stuff harvested. With the, uh, <clears throat> it is 75% humidity in the basement right now. We've had some rain and it is also 77 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll put the uh, Celsius equivalent there. But it makes it hard to dry out little bins down here. So that's why I've decided Blue was going to get a new job. All right, well, we're not going to do a complete fluff over here. We did that last time. Um, and it's only been 20 days. So 
I don't think it really needs it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to slide you down and we're going to look at the business end of the bin where I do my feeding and all the worms should be. Okay, there we are. So this portion here where the seam is from the uh, food grade barrel, it used to be a rain barrel back in the day, um, but I split it lengthways and we screwed it together in the middle and I'll put up a diagram of, of the uh, specifications for this. It's about a foot deep and uh, five foot, four and a half foot this way. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna have a look and see what the bin has been doing in progress. Now, the last time we fed Blue, we gave him some spaghetti and some melon. But then off camera, we had a bunch of corn and whatnot that I had to get rid of fast. And so, of course, we know Blue can handle it with his 15 to 20 pounds of my Uncle Jim's mix, which is red wigglers, blue worms, and European night crawlers. He can definitely handle almost anything I put at him. So one thing I did want to ask everybody is, have you made any DIY bins of your own? And if you did, what did you make? I mean, I've, you know, made this big, huge monster. Not everybody has room for that. But if you've made your own bin, please put that in the comments below and, and let me know what you and your, your family have made. So we're getting into the part here that I would consider the middle area. The area down there is probably three to four months old, maybe even as much as six. But this part is about three to two to three months old. And as you can see, the concentration of worms is much, much higher here in the middle part. So I'm going to kind of go through here and make sure that I can slide everything over. Um, what I do with the wedge method is, as things become more complete, I pile them up a little bit higher going towards the finish end so that I can make more room for the area that needs more attention. So as I do this, the worms will slowly depopulate this area and move to this area. It's a continuous migration. I think a proper wedge method is you leave the whole thing alone but uh, that's not really in my bandwidth to leave things alone. So we call this a modified wedge method. So as food gets more completed, it gets wedged down that way. So now we're getting into the newer bedding that I gave them around, I don't know, maybe a month ago. So we'll start looking through here and seeing what we have uh, as far as food that is is something the worms can get into. Now here's something, this is an avocado pit, you know, the hard pit. And after about four to six, depending, months, they do get into it and they do eat it. So I know some people are like, oh geez, why would I put something in my bin that's gonna take that long? Well, to rescue it from the landfill, or if you don't want to put, put it in your inside bin, then you can always put it in your outside compost bin. But the worms, wow, wow, wow. Holy cow. Oh my god. I was not expecting that this close to this end. Look at that. Holy sh**. That is like, that's like two pounds of worms. Maybe even more than two pounds of worms. Right there, all in one place. Some people are like, why do the worms ball up? Well, they ball up because there's something there that they like, which is food, most likely. But wow. Holy sh**. If I said a bad word, sorry. Some of you that know me personally, it happens. Okay, so, wow, was not expecting a worm ball this close to the middle. Um, wow. It was just spaghetti and melon down this deep. But they are certainly working it. Um, yeah, totally threw my hamster off the wheel there, finding that huge worm ball right there. Oh, wow, good worms being cute for the camera. Good job. So... Yep, completely lost my train of thought there. Okay, so <laughs> let's continue. But uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm moving down this way. And as I said, I put some corn and, and whatnot from a meal and I threw it in here um, off camera. Sorry, blue cheated on you. Uh, and then I uh, had another thing of food that also <laughs> 
needed to go away quickly, so I threw it in blue. So blue's probably had a feeding a week, and you guys haven't seen him in about two weeks. So I'm just kind of moving here, and I'm actually feeling that it's a little bit warm. Uh, that's something pretty rare. Normally I don't feed heavy enough for it to to heat up, but I'm not. It's not hot by any means, but it is warmer than the surface temperature of the bin. That's not something I, I generally see. So as you're watching, you can see that this is kind of a uh, milk chocolate color, whereas this is kind of a dark chocolate color um, because this is more finished and this is closer to being normal, just bedding. So you can still see that there's uh, the paleness of the cardboard, etc. So as I'm going through here, <laughs> if we get another huge worm ball like that, I'm probably just going to freak out. Um, but we did get another smaller worm ball here. And I'm moving things over so that the worms can concentrate on the areas that need to be concentrated more. So still flipping here. And then now we're getting into actually food chunks. So we're finding some of the grain. Um, come on, little buddy, get off there. So I'm finding, I don't know what this is, might be potatoes or something. But I'm going to do a hand up, move all the stuff over there. And uh, so we can have everything that needs to be concentrated on together at the end of the bin. So then I'm going to put the stuff that's in progress right here. Woo, ran into that worm ball again. That just... That's just wonderful. Good job, worms. And I'm just going to flip things over here, and you can see there's another, there's another worm ball right here. They are just going nuts. And I always suspected that uh, this bin could do a lot more than what I task it with. But honestly, I mean, uh, I don't normally have enough food around to task it this heavily but it looks like they are more than capable of uh of doing it now this is some grain that i had left over and it is a little bit warm but like i always say this bin is so huge that if the worms if it's uncomfortable for the worms because of temperature or acidity or, or whatever there's enough room here for them to get away from whatever it is so as usual I'm just grabbing up the food that's big and focusing it down at the other end but yeah there was some I don't even know what it was is still leftovers from CC and her moving it was grains and stuff like that that had expired so I just threw that all down at the end. And you can tell the worms are not into it yet. They're all right here. And, you know, maybe that is something that the worms kind of wait until it uh, gets to a, you know, whether it's a temperature or an acidity or, or whatever. The worms can move in when it's good for them. And being a really huge bin, you know, they're not stuck in an area that is uncomfortable to them. Here's another worm ball down at the end. I've mentioned before that this kind of slopes this way. And so all the liquids from any sort of food do tend to gravitate towards this end. Now, oddly enough, I'm not going to feed blue. This is probably one of the first times you've ever seen me hold back feeding blue. But I think there is there's enough food here that it should uh, last for another couple of weeks for them to work through it really well. As soon as the worms get done with this, then they can move down to this end. So that will work out really well. So they're mostly in this part, which is probably their favorite. As this dries, those worms will drop down and move over. And then as this cools down and becomes more hospitable for the worms, they will all move in. But what I am going to do, because I have just exposed a bunch of this food and I don't want flies or anything to get in here, I am going to top this up with some new bedding.
we've got the old stuff that's drying, we've got the new stuff that they're very interested in, and then you've got the items that the worms have not moved into, that I'm willing to bet the worm ball will shift down to this end by next time. So if you have any questions about this bin or anything, please put that in the comments below. I really do enjoy listening to, or you know, the conversations that go on in the comments. If you like this video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. All right, now thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, but YouTube thinks you're going to like this video over here, so you should go there right now. And if you want to see more of Blue, I'll put the playlist right over there.